get ready to smile again with radio's home post, They Can Save, written by Paul Riley. The master of the menage has just returned from a trip to the basement where he's been soaking the furnace. And as he seats himself beside his wife on the Davenport, he remarks, You talked lengthily on the telephone while I was down there. Did you hear my voice? Yes, Mary. But from the twitterings and titterings, I gathered you were talking to Ruthie. <laughs> yes, I was. You're quite the silk of dance. Elementary, my dear. What's it? <laughs> they coming over to play 500? <laughs> They're coming over, but not to play 500. We want to engage in drawing room cross talk, gay banter, and witty chat. This is ought to be fun. What well, ought to be fun? Fred's bringing over a blackboard. Oh. <laughs> but you can't guess why. Possibly he intends breaking it over my head. Possibly he does. Gee, we'll have jolly time. Fred can break his blackboard over my head, and then I'll playfully reciprocate by extracting all the teeth. Uh-huh. <laughs> But then they come in. Mm, right away soon, I guess. 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes. Percy said Fred had to be in and shave and trash. As soon as Rush shows up, I think I'll send him down to the drugstore for a new deck of cards. Cards are about shot. Oh, we're not going to play cards this evening. Oh, that's right. Fred's bringing a blackboard to smash over my head. He is bringing a blackboard. Why is he bringing a blackboard, Kitty? Tell Victor quick. Well, he's going to demonstrate to us how we can save our money. Is that a fact? Yes. And it ought to be fun and interesting both. Budgeting, he calls it. You're joking, of course. No, Fred's got it all worked out. Fred's got what all worked out? How to keep track of our pennies. Budgeting. Ruthie said like this, she said, Fred will set you people up a simple set of books. Fred will set me up a simple set of books? Yes, even a child can understand it. It's so easy. Fred will set me up a simple set of books? What's the matter? I think you're joking. No. I'm sure you're joking. Why would I be joking? Hi, people. Everybody along? Why would I be joking, Vic? Go to the dining telephone. Come to the other side. Why would I be joking, Vic? Tell me again what Fred's going to do. You act so funny. Tell me again what Fred's going to do. Engage in a discussion, are you people? Fine. Go to the dining telephone. He's going to bring a blackboard now. I said he was. He's going to set me up a simple set of books. I think that ought to be fun. He's going to advise me how to handle my income. I don't imagine he'll pry into our private business. Probably won't ask you what your salary is or anything. I got the idea from Ruthie. He'd pick figures at random and demonstrate how, if your income is so-and-so, you ought to not spend any more than such-and-such for clothes and not spend any more than such-and-such for rent. Oh, and not... Jerry, true, true. I don't want to shove myself in any What's private conversation. You What's eating you? Something certainly eating somebody. I'll just ask a simple question and then withdraw from the general conversation. Hey, do you know the position I hold down in the Consolidated Kitchenware Company? Huh? I think you heard me. I heard you, but I'm wondering if you've gone out of your head. I'm beginning to wonder myself. So far, nobody's taken the slightest notice of me or even glanced at my head. Let me reveal the position I hold down in the Consolidated Kitchenware Company. Apparently, you've forgotten. Well, apparently, you forgot. Steady, dear. I'm head of the bookkeeping department of the Consolidated Kitchener Company, plant number 14. Did I give you something for supper tonight that disagreed with you or what? I I'll can't... say it again. I am head of the bookkeeping department of the Consolidated Kitchener Company, plant number 14. Well, your eyes are just blazing, Dick. If anybody I... on the face of the earth thinks for one half-wit second that any half-wit like Fred Simbody is going to set up a half-wit set of half-wit simple books for me, they may think it. Badly mistaken. Oh. If Stembottom walks in here with any half-wit backboard, I'll throw it out in the half-wit street. Oh, I can't tell now. I didn't before. I don't expect anybody will listen to this. But they're going to show me how to budget my income, is he? They're going to set me up a simple set of books, is he? Why, the big lame brain crook. I was juggling figures in my head when he was in short pads. Well, Vic, I never thought about that side of it. Honest, I never... And I'll tell you what I'll bet. I'll bet Fred never either. <laughs> well, it is ridiculous idea, him coming here and telling you about bookkeeping. <laughs> I was working with six-digit figures before he knew what one plus one was. Why, sure you were. Every day in my life, I go down to the plant and balance the budget of a great big kitchenware business. Why, this very afternoon, I helped set up a set of books so complicated, Fred Stenbottom's head would swim before you could holler out. Sure. Here, that big ox calmly calls my wife on the telephone and tells her he's bringing over a blackboard to demonstrate. 
Well, he didn't realize this. He didn't think. You know how Fred is. What does he picture me doing down the place? Sweeping out the place? Maybe he's got an idea I go to the office and play the mandolin all day and dance barefooted and a heap of great. He didn't realize. He didn't think. And I've been just as addle-headed. If I'd had six ounces of brains, it would have occurred to me in a minute. My husband's head of the bookkeeping department and knows more about figures and numbers and arithmetic. Stop on, Dan. Stop on, Dan. Some evening next week, let's call up Dr. Keezy and offer to drop by and show him how to pull teeth. Or let's get a hold of Daddy, who next door, and explain to him the fine points of running a locomotive. Stop on, Dan. Stop on, Dan. At last, somebody spoke to me. Don't be mad at Fred, Vic. Hello? Oh, yes, Miss Jim Adam. Fine thing. Yes, I believe she's right here, Andy. Well, Ruthie. Better tell her to warn her sweet hubby to leave his black boy at home. All right, Willie. People speak to me again. I judge twice in the same evening. Yes, lady. Oh? Oh, no, now, hey. No, but Fred's always buying the trees. Oh, no, but after all, you have to give the other fella a chance to buy. Uh (laughs) All right, lady. All right. They're bringing ice cream. I don't give a half of you. Ruthie wants to know what flavor is it, John. Licorice. Say something, but she's waiting here. I don't want any lame brain flavor. Fruity fruity? Aqua. He likes fruity fruity flavor. He does, but Fred don't. Huh? Doug likes fruity fruity flavor, but Mr. Stembottom hates it like a snake. Oh, that's right. Uh, butterscotch fix? Aqua. I'll tell Ruthie butterscotch fix. Mr. Stembottom hates butterscotch also. Which flavor is it he don't hate? Chocolate. Uh, how'd chocolate be there? I said heck with it. Yeah, but Ruthie's waiting here. Fine. I'll say chocolate. Say whatever you please. Hey, excuse the delay, Ruthie. We had to have a long discussion about which flavor would taste the most delicious. <laughs> yes. Yes, finally got it settled. Vic is screaming and hollering bloody murder for chocolate flavor. Yes. Yes. All right, lady. Fine. Well, we'll be looking for you. Goodbye. You got anything around here to melt lead in? Melt lead in? I thought I could demonstrate to Fred the proper way to make nuts and bolts. He'd probably be interested, seeing he works in a foundry and all. Oh, Vic, are you sure you're not being just the tiniest bit childish? I'm not sure about anything anymore. Except that if anybody brings any blackboard in here, I'm going to make them eat it. My own wife invites a big clown in I the house. I was a ninny, and I apologize for it. As far as Fred goes, you have to make allowances. Didn't he say he was going to set me up a simple set of books? Yes, he did, but he... Didn't he say he was going to show me how to budget my income? Vic, he probably worked out some little system or other, and he's proud of it and just wants to show it to you is all. It's just like Fred Stenbottom to go to work and forget for a minute you know more about bookkeeping than he'll ever know if he lives to be 40,000 years old. I appreciate your feelings are hurt. My feelings would be hurt, too. Now that there's a pause in the conversation, I might as well entertain you people with the side-splitting anecdote about Smelly Clark's uncle's trap. <laughs> he had bookkeeping troubles, too. It just so happened him and his lady friend took it in you're her head to... You're enjoying yourself now. What? I'll say you're just enjoying yourself now. Sitting there looking all sour and picked on. Your feelings are hurt, and you're angry and all that, but you realize as much as anybody else does that... Fred never actually meant anything. But still, you hate to get out of the mood you're in. So like some little child that stubbed their toe and keeps on crying long after the hurting has stopped. Stop on, Dan. Go on talking and acting the Stop on, Dan. Stop on, Dan. Well, answer it. Okay. Isn't that right? I say nothing. Hello? Oh, yes. Sure, Miss Denbottom. Just one second. Well. Called from the drugstore, I think. Heard a voice holler. Peanut butter on white vanilla shake and hold a whip. All right. Yes, lady. Oh, say, that's too bad. All right. They're out of chocolate flavor. What? Drugstore's out of chocolate flavor. I don't. Ruthie wants to know what other flavor you like. Equa. Strawberry? I said equa. No sense running the childishness in the ground. I said equa. Caramel flavor? Caramel flavor, yes. Tell her caramel flavor. Vic, I'm going to tell her caramel flavor. Uh, Ruthie? 
caramel flavor. Yes, that's right, caramel flavor. Vic's sitting here with his mouth just watering and yelling for caramel flavor. <laughs> <laughs>